Good morning, everyone. Day 66 on the trail. Just walked out of the driveway for Woods Hole Hostel. Excuse me. Now we got a half mile walk back to the trail. Ugh. Nice day, beautiful rustic lodge and bunkhouse. Uh, I have like an 11, I think 11 mile, just over 11 miles, not counting this half, to the road closest to Parisburg. And then a mile walk to town. So, it's, wow, nine o'clock, uh, late start. <clears throat> I looked at my tentative schedule, looks like I'm, with the big miles I put in, I'm two days ahead, so I may be able to stay an extra day in Parisburg, we'll see how it goes, be nice to give myself a rest. And then, uh, but we'll figure it out once we're there. Not sure exactly where I'm staying. My choices are, uh, there's a Plaza Motel, reasonably priced. And then there's a hostel that's even cheaper with a bunkhouse. So, it's supposed to be a good hostel. All right. That being said, let me get hiking because this half mile is mostly uphill. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you up the trail. It's been pretty rocky since I got up here on the ridge. As you can see. You get a patch like this once in a while. But then it goes back to the rocks. <laughs> Might be a view. A little side trail. Oh, hey, what's it say? Look at that. It says view. No, I'm not climbing out there. Wow. this they're not sure what I am they're curious I just walked up on them bah. Bah. Very nice. Not sure what to do. I'm sounding like a a baby. <laughs> Ah! 
<laughs> All right, come on. Hello, everybody. A bunch of sweet birch here. There was one branch sticking across the trail, so I cut off the branch. Remember, if you, sorry, I'm peeling the outer layer of bark, the dark colored bark. Give me a second here. Anyway, you can see the light colored green. That's the cambium. That's the living tissue of vascular tissue. It includes the xylem and the phloem where that transport water and nutrients throughout the plant. Well, if you remember, sweet birch is one of the two birches that have that uh, wintergreen smell. So I cut a few two and a half inch pieces. I can keep them in my mouth and keep that flavor and keep my mouth moist. So if you smell it, you also think of birch beer. <sighs> anyway, so sweet birch and yellow birch are the only ones that have that wintergreen smell. So, and... In case you can't place the smell, remember around Halloween you used to get those wax uh, fluty whistles? That's the flavor. That's the smell. So, All right, see you up the trail. Doc's Knob Shelter. This is nice. A little low bridge to get in. But look at this. Hell, I'd have stayed here last night <laughs> if I knew how nice it was. Uh. All right. Let me take a pack off break, and then I'm going to get back on the trail. Okay, this is the first patch of May apple I've seen in a couple days. <clears throat> I did my research on the May apple, why some have two stems and the fruit, and some don't. Uh, from what I found is... When the stems come up, they're going to either be single stems, no fruit, or twin stems with the fruit. But they don't usually come up in... One year it'll be sing, single stem, and another year it'll be double stem, but not necessarily a, a strict alternating pattern. It'll be one or the other. Uh, but what I understand is they don't really reproduce very strongly by seed they reproduce primarily by rhizomes so all of these are connected by rhizomes in all likelihood and the patch of may may apple will grow six to ten inches a year <clears throat> it puts most of its reproduction into rhizome and underground growth um except for the year that it produces fruit and then it puts a lot more energy into the fruit. And I think uh, what I read was the primary um, dispersal method for seeds might be box turtles, which like to eat the fruit. And then, of course, wherever they are later, <laughs> discard the fruit, so to speak. Uh, but the primary means of reproduction, at least certainly in the immediate area, is through rhizomes. And I think I read someone, I think I read that it's very capable of growing under black walnut. In case some of you don't know, black walnut trees, <clears throat> when the 
when the rain runs on the leaves, it drips uh, chemicals, which uh, what they call allelopathic chemicals. Um, the chemicals help prevent other trees and stuff from growing under the black walnuts to help reduce competition. So evidently the May apples are resistant to that. Uh, that uh, characteristic of black walnuts. So, there you go. I told you I'd research it. It took me a little while to get to the intercept service. Seems to be a difficult thing to do here in southern Virginia where the trail is. The last hostel did not have Wi-Fi at the bunkhouse. So, very nice. All right, moving on. A lot of star chickweed up here. You got some of those too. I'm having trouble with these five petal flowers. Because some things say they're root anemone, some say they're wood anemone. So I'm not sure which they are. But I'll keep trying to figure it out. There you go. Large white trillium. Never seen them so open before. All right. Here's another uh, sort of example of succession. Okay, you've got the trail here. All right. Well, first of all, obviously there was a fire here. Killed all these trees. Something killed them anyway. Bad. But I would suspect the fire or disease, but most likely a fire. And uh, here along the trail, where trail crews probably come in and cut grass to make, keep it clear, it stays at a grassy stage. But grass tends to be one of those pioneer species. One of the first things that invades a disturbed site. And you can you can see it elsewhere. Well, I've noticed lots of briars as well as some birch trees coming in in the understory. So what was probably grassy or shortly after the fire, the uh, green briars come in, start creating shade. The birches come in. And you can imagine how shady it is under all that thicket. Well, that shade, well, the birches like the sunlight, but that shade will limit what can grow in the ground there, as well as keeping the ground moist after a rain because it keeps the sun from beating on it. So under those birches, other things can see it in. Trees with more shade tolerance. So... And they can come up. All right, I think that's a. It might be a hickory right there. That little one. Can't. I can't, I can't tell. Yeah, this one right there. All right. But all the fast-growing, sun-loving trees are jumping up to get ahead. Eventually, the shade-tolerant ones will come in underneath. And I'll grow them. Then the say then the sun loving trees will die out, leaving only the shade tolerant ones who 
will form a canopy, and then under those will be the most shade tolerant ones. So, right here we got a a cherry. Pretty sure it's a cherry. Let me see. Yep, that's a cherry. Cherry's a sun-loving tree. Very commonly comes in after fire. Matter of fact, it's a cherry called fire cherry because it's so commonly a tree that comes in after fire. That's another cherry right there in front of us. So, there you have it. Succession. One, uh, Oh, I'm going senior moment. One group of organisms closely associated uh, coming in after another, succeeding them. Like one king would succeed another, a, a, a series of successions. So I did a terrible job of explaining that, and I'm sorry. So I'm kind of tired, not thinking clear, and hadn't been thinking about it until that moment. This ridge line would be a wildflower enthusiast's paradise. There's all sorts of flowers here. Geraniums, garlic mustard, dandelions. Uh, star chickweed. What else did I see? The uh, the trillium. Uh, there's others that aren't in flower yet that I wouldn't even know what they are. Garlic mustard, introduced species, but still a flower. Strawberries. A uh, whole bunch of stuff. All right. I thought I'd be over with this ridge already, but looking at all these flowers and stuff has slowed me down. So I'm going to get to moving. Get down into town and have something good to eat. Uh, I finally had cell, cell phone signal so I could call to try to find a place for tonight in Parisburg. Now, everything is booked. Angel's Rest Hostel has camping room. So I'll probably go there and pitch a tent. Tomorrow night, I booked a room at the Plaza Motel. So, <clears throat> for tonight and tomorrow I'm covered. When I get there, I'll probably... I'll take a zero, maybe two, but Trail Bob had a great idea. Since there's a 40% chance of rain tomorrow and like a 100% chance of rain on Friday, <coughs> make Friday my zero and tomorrow pay for a slack pack back to Parisburg get the miles in maybe have to do it with a bit of rain but you'll have a spot to dry off so that's actually a really good idea so might do that Got to think about that a little bit. I mean, a long, long day of 20 miles, but doable. All right. Let me get down to hiking and finish this last two and a half miles. These are just off the trail or along the trail, but you're viewing them from the non-trail side. Thank you.
wonder if I pull that rock out, what would happen? Man. Some nice stacked rocks. Another one right there. All right. These, they're young, so I'm not sure, but they look like touch-me-nots. Jewelweed, which you find in moist sites. And I think that's what they are. Interesting. There we go. Very mad garter snake. Not happy that I picked them up. All right, coming down to Route 100. Nice little meadow. Oh, ho, ho. there's Trail Bob. I may be, I might have to walk. <laughs> I don't think they were counting on me. Uh. All right, we're going to see how to get to the hostel. All right. Here at Angel's Rest Hostel. I'm tenting because the bunkhouse is full. I'm trying to set up a few other things. I got a slack pack southbound arranged for tomorrow, 21 miles. And uh, so I'll have to get ready for that, pack up all my gear, and set it aside. Um, so. I'll show you my accommodations later. Right now I'm going out. Right now I'm going out to have some dinner. Pick up some snacks for tomorrow. A slack pack at the grocery store. So that I can uh, make 21 miles. Oh my goodness. The reason I'm doing that. If I do the 21 miles. Um... I do the 21 miles tomorrow when there's a chance of rain. The next day, Friday, it's supposed to be a lot of rain. I'll make that my zero day. And then uh, I don't have to hike in heavy rain. So, let me go get something to eat. I'd say the best place in town is a Mexican restaurant. Hey everybody, hey, I'm back from eating, um, I made arrangements for tomorrow's slack pack, I will be, um, <laughs> pick up at 7 a.m., so I gotta break all my gear down and pack it up by 7 a.m., uh, so I can store it while I'm on the trail. Um, so it'll be an early morning tomorrow. Um, dinner was good. A nice breeze going on. I gotta get my quilt out and get ready for bed. I gotta do this video. I don't know how much filming I'll do tomorrow. Chance of rain. 
30% chance of printing, but not not supposed to be a lot of rain. Oh, excuse me. Big beer makes me sleepy. Tomorrow uh, be a long day, 21 miles back to town, and then I'll have to get all my gear and move it to the hotel. Um, Friday is supposed to be pretty heavy rain all day long. It's actually supposed to rain Saturday too, so we'll, we'll have to play that one by ear. Everything in town is like booked. I just barely got in at the hotel. Everybody, amazing how many people are still hiking the trail. Uh, so, that being said, I'm going to get ready for bed. I'm going to work on my, work on today's video. And then, uh, go to sleep. Because I got to be up by you know, 5.30 or so to start packing up. All right, we'll talk to you there. We'll talk to you tomorrow, all right, on day uh, 67 tomorrow. All right.